you know, you've learned that one session a market does not make, but the Fed giving us a clear kind of travel direction today, right, when we think about the technology sector. How are you thinking right now when it comes particularly to software and those higher multiple tech names? Thanks very much, Ed. It's good to be here. Uh, first of all, there has, I agree with Richard, there's been a lot of speculation in this market, especially with certain components of the tech index. However, um, I have a slightly different view. Um, when we look at how we got here, um, Q4 earnings, in fact, weren't so bad. They weren't as bad as investors feared. Um, companies actually were able to constructively take down guidance for the forward year. And on top of that, most companies have actually taken a much more significant step toward profitability and improving profitability. And I think that's a big part of the reason why the average stock has rallied. The IGV software index was up 15%. As of yesterday, that's almost double the S&P appreciation. And there are components of that that were up 30 to 50%. Not all of them speculative. But I agree, high interest rates are very tough for tech. Um, plus, we're entering the seasonally difficult part of the year. So it's likely we give up some of these gains. And I think that would be constructive. You know, we're in the depths of earnings season and, and, you know, all we can do on a case by case basis is look at those that beat expectations and those that miss. But as you look across software, SaaS, enterprise in particular, how are you discerning those that are struggling in this environment and those that are outdoing expectations? Sure. Well, at Clearbridge, we have a quality bias and we try to invest in quality companies, quality management teams that are extremely well positioned across their sector. Um, HubSpot is an example of that. HubSpot reported after the close it actually beat revenues by 5%. It beat EPS by 30%. The street was concerned because they announced a 7% headcount cut uh, about a week ago. And actually, they guided inline revenues going forward. And they guided EPS 50% above the street. So I would say that's an example of a quality right. name, which we like a lot. Um, and we try to pick leading companies in their category, companies that have, um, like HubSpot, that are expanding a product portfolio, moving up and down market, doing things to really determine their destiny beyond the markets. Hillary, we just showed a fantastic chart. In fact, I think we'll bring it up again because it was that good, showing the NASDAQ 100 a pretty, you know, historic relative highs to the S&P 500, right? We're talking about elevated levels that go back to near its dot-com peak. My question to you based on that chart is, is where do we sit right now with tech valuations? We had a brutal sell-off in 2022. We're trying to pass valuations as part of the equation around higher rates as well. Got it. That's such a good question, Ed. Uh, not all tech is created equal. <laughs> However, um, software and enterprise tech in particular has actually been adjusting from a valuation perspective for two years, two years as of April. Currently, for software in particular, valuations stand within their pre-pandemic five- and ten-year averages. And in fact, for growth equities, they're below the ten-year average, in part because uh, many of the growth contingents of, of the sector weren't as profitable, but they're becoming more profitable. So I think we've done a lot of constructive work. Um, again, the markets certainly can give back a lot of what we've gotten, but I would view those that give back as an interesting opportunity because I think at the end of the day, digital transformation and many of the things these companies are doing for our digital economy remain incredibly important. I don't think that's going away by any means. Hilary, how many of your conversations at Clearbridge and with your clients are about artificial intelligence right now? Many. <laughs> I bet. Tell me. Sure. Well, well it's interesting. Um, we're, we're large holders of Microsoft and avid fans. Um, what's interesting about this, even though the world is incredibly focused on search and the impact of chat GBT, uh, on search. I think the impact to Microsoft in particular goes well beyond search. I think this could be a huge boon to their cloud business, their productivity application business, their development platform business. All of that accrues eventually to their cloud business. So I think this could be a leapfrogging for Microsoft in the marketplace who has never actually been seen, never gotten the credit for their technology prowess and never been seen as a leader in important next generation technologies, whereas AI is probably the most important next generation technology of, of this decade. 